Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Before we solve this problem, let's see what the problem was. The problem was that there was just one copy of i that got incremented all the way to 10, and then all those set timeout calls were pointing to the same, were referring to the same print function, which was referring to the same copy of i. So when that print function eventually got called 10 times, I had an updated value, so it printed 10, 10 times, right? So the problem here is that there was just one copy of i. What we need is when we queue up all those print requests, right, to set them up, when we say, okay, execute this after a second, we do that 10 times. There are 10 calls to this print object, which are in the queue. What we want is for those 10 queued items to point to different values of i, right? Because we don't want them to all point to the same value of i. If they point to the same value of i, then they are going to print the same value. Right? So we want them to point to different values. The value that was contained in the variable i when the set timeout was called. Right? So we need multiple copies of i. And how do you create multiple copies of a variable in JavaScript? You create that using functions. Remember, every time you execute a function, whatever var is declared in that function, there is a new copy of it created. We've been through this already. So what we need to do is wrap this in a function and then create a var i inside it. And that's how you get this. So here's how I do this. How do you wrap something inside a function? The easiest way to do this is an ify. Okay, so I'm gonna create an ify here. So I'm gonna say function, it is gonna be an anonymous function and inside this function, I'm going to move set timeout here. Okay, and this is gonna be immediately invoked. So I have an ify here. Okay, just by converting this to an ify, nothing happens. It's exactly the same. Okay, just to prove this, I'm gonna execute this one more time. Reload and run. It is gonna print 10, 10 times. But now what's gonna happen is, it is actually creating a scope for this ify. Okay, there is a scope that's created for each execution of this for loop. The first instance, i is zero, but now there is a scope created and inside that scope, there is a set timeout that's called, right? Which is executed immediately, yes. But there is that scope object that is created thanks to this iffy. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is convert this to an inline function rather than it be a function object because it makes things a bit more easier to read and follow. So this becomes an inline function. This might look like it's no way easier to read, but trust me, and as we make these other changes that we're gonna do soon, this becomes a bit more easier to read semicolon here. Okay, now the set timeout is taking this function, which is the first argument, and this uh, number, which is the second argument. Again, I have not affected the logic. It's pretty much the same. So rather than it be a function reference, which get passed, it is the inline function, which is getting passed to set timeout. I'm gonna execute this one more time to prove this. Reload and run. There you go. 10 gets printed 10 times after it waits for one second. But now here's where I'm going to use closures. You remember I told you how this ify was creating a new scope for each iteration of this for loop. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable inside that scope. So inside the function, which is the ify, I'm going to create a var current value of i. It's a tedious variable name, I know, but hopefully this makes it very self-explanatory. So I have a variable called current value of i. Now what's gonna happen is every time this function gets created, since there is a new scope object, there is a new copy of this current value of i that gets created. So since this loop executes 10 times, there are 10 different copies of the current value of i. So since there are multiple copies, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign the value of i to this copy each time. So the first time for the first scope object, i is zero, so current value of i is zero. For the second scope object, i is one, so the current value of i is one. So there is the same variable i that gets updated each time, but since there is a new copy of this current value of i variable, I can actually print that variable instead of i. So I'm going to print this. And uh, i gets updated at the end, finally it's 10 all the time, but now there are 10 copies of this function scope that have 10 different values of this current value of i, so now, if I were to execute this, 
Notice that it waits for one second, but then there are different values that get printed because each time, in each iteration of this for loop, I'm holding on to the value of i at that point of time, and I'm saving it in the scope that this if we created for that execution. So set timeout is going to hold on to this function, which remembers the scope thanks to closures. It remembers what was the scope chain. And now what's the scope chain here? There is this function scope, which does not have any variables. So when you access current value of i, it's going to look up. And now it's this ifies function scope, which contains the current value of i that has preserved the value of i at that point of time. And that's what's going to get logged to the console. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. There is another way in which you can do this, which is rather than have it be declared inside, I can actually accept it as an argument, right? You remember a function argument is basically a variable assignment. So I can actually have this be current value of i as a function argument. And now what's going to happen is when you execute the ify, you need to pass that i during that point as a function argument. So I'm going to pass i over here. So when this ify executes, it is going to pass i as an argument. And this ify, since it executes immediately, the current value of i is going to get assigned to i, which is pretty much the same as saying, saying var current value of i equals i, but we are doing this as a function argument. So this gets executed and this works exactly the same way. Reload and run, and it gets the right value each time. So again, this is something that's tricky. At least I found it tricky when I first learned about this, but hopefully me explaining through the steps and what happens in each iteration kind of makes things simpler. I definitely encourage you to play with it and probably watch this video again if this some of it doesn't make sense. And uh, it's one of those things that once you get it, you get it, and then all this thing makes sense. Play around with this and uh, see you in the next video.